hello everyone i welcome you once again to another class on alternative english and today i come up to you with a new topic absolutely new topic a very beautiful article by environmentalist ashish kothari and basuri taneja the title of the lesson is the many and the none so here i present you an introduction to the many and the none this world as you can see is filled with wonders it's a planet that is filled with colorful species of birds insects animals plants fruits and flowers our planet is a wholesome treat and we humans are immensely lucky to have lived in this planet for long long centuries the authors here ashish kothari and basuri taneja both environmentalist are working for the preservation and conservation of biodiversity of india for quite some time before we start the lesson let us have a quick look into the authors ashish kothari is one of the founding members of the environmental action group kalpa vriksh which was started in the year 1979 he is the coordinator of the technical and policy co group to formulate india's national biodiversity strategy and action plan he is also the head of iucn inter commission task force on local communities and protected areas and is on the board of greenpeace international ashish kothari began working on environment and development issues in his school days in 1978 79 as one of the founders of kalpa vriksh an indian environmental ngo besides that he is the author or editor of over 30 books some of which include churning the art making of global india alternative futures india unshackled and pluriverse a post development dictionary and over 400 articles which have already been published in national as well as international levels talking about basuri taneja she is another young environmental activist living in new delhi she is also the part of the team involved in developing India's national biodiversity strategy and action plan so let us see what these two authors have in store for us in this beautifully crafted article the many and the none so here i start variety they say is the spice of life spice what is spice have you ever loved eating khichdi every day yeah it's very healthy but then do we love to eat khichdi all the time every day no spice it is the spice or rather the spices that are available to us that make our dishes tasty interesting nutritious how boring if each day were like the other if each day happened to be sunny or rainy just imagine 
and how distasteful if we had to eat the same dish every day we hear the word often but how often do we think about what biodiversity means to us biodiversity so very often the authors say that we have come across the word biodiversity and spoken much about it but do we really understand what biodiversity actually means biodiversity is the essence that make up the entire planet in the urban centers of modern india where middle class lives a diversity of food is what might bring biodiversity to a level we can understand how would it be if we had potatoes or for that matter aubergine what is aubergine brinjal to live on suppose just imagine if we had to have only and only potatoes throughout all our meals or maybe brinjals for a try how would it sound of course not none of you would love to have only brinjals or only potatoes for your meals all the time or only one variety of mango throughout india instead of several hundreds that one can savor through the few months of summer so india is a place that is rich in mangoes we have more than 1000 varieties of mangoes alfonso totapuri okay then dasheri langra kesar so these are just a few examples of the numerous numerous the huge list of mangoes that are available to us and we indians would have been tired if we had supposedly been forced to taste just one variety of mango does the others feel that biological diversity is the variety and variability of life on earth it is biological diversity that explains us why there is so much of variety there is so much of variation in the different forms of life that exist on earth it is manifest in close to 1000 varieties of mangoes that thrive in india it is present in the 14 different kinds of wood we see depressingly inlaid to make a wall painting india is a land of forest with number of number of different texture different colored woods cedar hemlock ash rosewood teakwood and countless countless forms and types available to us but it's a sad fact that these woods are depressingly depressingly because the owners are feeling very sorry that such precious kinds of wood are being chopped down just to decorate the interiors of a rich man's office or a rich man's apartment and then he writes and if we extend our minds a little more we should be able to see that it also means the vibrant colors that characterize holy and indian clothes which come or used to till synthetics took over from a variety of dye producing plants so you must be knowing that india in india earlier there was a time when colors or dyes used to be produced from the numerous different kinds of plants that were available 
from the flowers and seeds of these plants different colors different shades of colors could be produced and even today we have what we called natural colors or bio colors herbal colors the colors that we play holy with okay or maybe the colors that are used to dye our clothes these are mostly extracted from a number of dye producing plants which are still available but on the verge of extinction and of course it also means the tiger and the rhino and elephant charismatic animals charismatic very attractive striking beautiful animals that evoke awe and excitement which are used as flagship species for conservation programs so diversity is not only seen in mangoes not only seen in woods not only seen in colors but also in the animal species that are available in the indian forest now we have to understand what is meant by flagship species what is it flagship species are a reference to those organisms or animals or birds which have become a symbol and a leading element of a conservation campaign for example pandas are a flagship species because they elicit an emotional response from people some of the chosen flagship species include the bengal tiger the giant panda the golden lion the african elephant and the asian elephant what are the animals that the authors refer to tiger elephant rhino why because these are some of the most charismatic most attractive animals which have been serving the purpose of conservation programs okay so that is why our author draws attention to the tiger the beautiful stripes on the back of a tiger the rhino which is all striking the one horn rhino that is found in kajironga or home and the two horn rhino which is popular in south africa the big savanna elephant and of course our asian elephant now these animals are all striking and they have always served the purpose of flagship species these animals have been tag marked as flagship species and are used as icons or ambassadors for various conservation programs but biodiversity is not limited to animals alone finally it also includes the range of natural and human influenced ecosystems that we live amidst forest lakes and rivers coast seas grasslands agricultural fields and pastures deserts snowbound peaks even urban areas with vestiges of vegetation and water bodies so here comes the reference to ecosystem what is an ecosystem an ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment the examples of ecosystem are agro ecosystem aquatic ecosystem coral reef desert forest human ecosystem and a number you know a number of different kinds of ecosystems with variations in animals plants soil types as well as climate and what is the importance of ecosystem here every plant or every organism every animal 
they are interdependent they are dependent on the existence of one another for their own survival we have the lakes with its special kind of ecosystem the fish and the reptile and the plants that live in and around the place the marine ecosystem with a variety of mammals fishes and different plant types the snow covered mountains the forest grasslands the cor- coral reefs the deserts with its unique system of eco living the various other ecosystem that exist even the polar regions are a beautiful example of an ecosystem now why is this ecosystem important i suppose all of you have gone through the food web or the food chain when you were in class 9 or 10 and being science students i am sure you are very much aware of the forest food web where every organism from microorganism to the largest of predators is or are interdependent they are dependent on the existence of one another similarly in the marine biodiversity or marine ecosystem you have phytoplanktons zooplanktons to the top predators and several levels of primary secondary and tertiary uh, you know producers and consumers existing in the same ecosystem similarly in the desert biodiversity food web you can see that from cacti to the scavengers there are several levels of organism existing in full synchrony okay this synchronization is essential for the existence of biodiversity as well as for the existence of life on earth perhaps the least obvious aspect of biodiversity is genetic however we must understand the others make us aware that the least obvious which is not clear which is not seen from the top the aspect that is hidden that is genetic okay ultimately what they trying to say is that biodiversity is actually genetic genes make a difference to biodiversity or rather it is genetic difference that makes up biodiversity variety in what constitutes the basic building block of all life is also the base of continuous evolution and we should not forget that we humans are a product of the same process even if we sometimes in our technological bravado think we are apart from nature so from discussing biodiversity the others introduce us to genetic diversity how differences in the dna among individuals among organisms actually make up the greater part or larger sum of diversity biological diversity okay and he says that we human being however advanced we are we should never forget that we are products of evolution which is again determined by the genetic variations from mammals to birds to humans we all are in the same system we are in the process of evolution we are forever changing that is why apes have turned out to be human being and we are once again moving ahead further in the race do you believe that our genes are the same since the start of evolution of course not there has been a lot of change that has taken over our body as well as our mind so 
however technologically advanced we are we can never think that we are apart from nature or distant from nature diversity in genes also provides the basis for continued survival in the face of new or changing environments when the number of lions or orangutans or of a plant species decreases these species lose their resilience to environmental changes or to genetic decay and eventually succumb so when it is the known fact that certain species are losing their ground on the planet what is actually happening is that they are losing their resilience to fight to the changes that are taking place these species are failing to adapt themselves to the changing environmental factors take for example the dinosaur which existed long long years ago millions of years ago such mammoth organism can succumb to extinction then human beings are god knows we are just mere mere tiny organisms comparison with the massive dinosaurs then it is very sure that one day if this continues to happen if genetic diversity or genetic variation continues to happen human beings too can lose grounds so you can understand how this tiny looking genes are actually responsible for keeping up the population going the human race going and the number of biodiverse species going charles darwin in his theory of evolution has established how every other organism is a product of evolution genes are the basic structures that is why it is the basic building block of all life and it is the base of continuous evolution at another po- level this fact comes home to us when we realize that vegetables are losing their distinctive taste having lost the natural variation and having been doctored to reach the biggest size possible or attain the glossiest exterior their genetic diversity is quelled to serve the function of yield maximization and to suit our increasingly unidimensional view of what looks good the others are referring to our unidimensional view unidimensional view a view where just one point of view is given importance the view that what looks good sells most and it is because of this unidimensional or one sided idea that we are also looking towards yield maximization we are manipulating the genes of various fruits as well as various vegetables just to suit to our taste these products might not be as healthy as to their natural types or natural genetically available products but we are giving them more importance why because of that unidimensional view and that is why biotechnologists they are trying their maximum to make a change they're trying to doctor they're trying to manipulate or change the genetic structure of the vegetables as well as fruits and we can see the result today if you taste vegetable you won't find the natural taste it's something different the tomato doesn't taste like a tomato anymore or even a cabbage doesn't taste like a cabbage anymore so why is this happening 
it is because of genetic decay and genetic decay that has been initiated by the doctoring the manipulation with genetic structure of this vegetable so in a way what our authors are saying is that despite the recent advances in biotechnology these impact has had a very bad impact on the existence of biodiversity if that continues to happen do you think variety will ever exist if the tomato stops tasting like a tomato and taste actually similar to an apple or maybe any other sweet fruit will there be any variation will there be biodiversity think for yourself i suppose you have understood today's part please comment on the section that is given below and see you next time till then bye bye